everyone, Pyro Burke here. Welcome to the second video in my series on converting an old air-cooled VW from the point style ignition to electronic ignition. In the first video, I mentioned that I was hoping this conversion would help make my 68 Beetle a little easier to start. Um, in addition, I also unboxed my new Pertronics flamethrower distributor, which I'll be using for this conversion. So in this video, I'll be showing how to remove the stock distributor and install the flamethrower. In the next video, I'll show how to set the timing. So let's get started. So I removed the air cleaner and the fuel line um, in order to make things easier to see for the video. You don't normally have to do that though. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that the engine is set to top dead center on cylinder number one. Cylinder number one is the one in the far back corner over there. Um, top dead center on the crank pulley will, could either be for cylinder one or cylinder three. So we'll use the distributor to figure out which cylinder we're on. I already marked number one on the distributor cap. Number three would be back here on the opposite corner. So I also put a little mark on the body. Anyway, to rotate the engine, we use a 30 millimeter wrench on the crankshaft pulley nut and we rotate it until this U-shaped timing mark on the front of the pulley is lined up with the split case half mark right here. Uh, someone's painted this white but you won't always have that. Anyway, the top dead center mark is the one that is the large dimple in the front side of the pulley, not the little V-shaped mark in the back side of the pulley. That's the actual timing mark for the factory distributor. So anyway, we'll go ahead and take off the distributor cap to see if we're on cylinder one or three. And we did. Sure enough, the rotor is pointed towards cylinder number one. Now, if it had been pointed to cylinder number three back here, you'd simply have to take the wrench and keep rotating the engine another 180 degrees to get it to top dead center on number one. Okay, now we can remove the factory distributor. We'll start by removing the vacuum advance hose. And since the flamethrower is a centrifugal advance distributor, it won't use the vacuum signal from the carburetor. So we need to plug this little port on the side of the carburetor so we don't have a vacuum leak. Um, these plug kits are really handy when you're working on this sort of project. And I think the smallest one will probably fit the best. So just put one of those rubber plugs over the port. Make sure it fits nice and tight. That one looks really good. So that part will be done. Um, the other thing we have to do is take off the condenser wire. This is black wire back here that runs to the negative side of the coil. So just pull that off and pull it, pull it on through. And then the last thing we have to do is take off the clamp bolt, which is a, actually a 10 millimeter nut, and just loosen that a little bit. Okay. You can check that it's loose. If the distributor rotates, it is. So we just pull out the factory distributor, just like that. Okay, on the factory distributor, you'll see that the key is a little bit offset. We talked about this in the last video. So you'll notice on the new flamethrower distributor, it's the same way. You wanna make sure that you're putting this in so that the key will go in the right way and the rotor should be approximately pointed to number one, which we said was over here. So, and I'm gonna assume that the logo goes toward the front. Before we install the new distributor, there's a couple small things we need to do first. First of all, don't forget to put a little bit of lubrication on this O-ring to make installation easier. Second thing, you'll have to trim and install terminals on the two wires. So I find about 10 inches of wire length is about right. Now the kit does come with a couple of crimp style spade terminals, but I like solder terminals myself just because I think they're a little more resistant to chemicals and weather um, on outside applications like underneath the hood. So I've used uh, spade terminals and shrink sleeve for this. So 
Um, installing the distributor can be a little tricky because you have to get the keyway lined up and you can see it's a little bit offset from center. So you can start by looking down in the hole and seeing the distributor drive. So you can roughly get this thing lined up um, to its approximate location as you drop it in. And for me, it looks about like this. So I'll put it down in there, get past the O-ring. Now this part, you can see it stops maybe an eighth of an inch from the bottom. Um, that is the last little bit that can be tricky to get in. And it just takes the right combination of wiggling, pushing down on the body and wiggling the rotor to get it to drop in. And eventually it will go. All right, you can see now it is seated. And you can tell the rotor's in the correct position when you can only turn it a small amount like this. So we don't want to tighten the clamp bolt yet because we need to set our initial timing. But first we're going to connect up the two wires. Now remember the factory distributor only has one wire from a condenser. This, this Hall effect sensor in the electronic ignition distributor actually has two wires. So just like the factory distributor, the black wire goes to the negative side of the coil, which is this side. And, but unlike that, the red wire, which the other one doesn't even have, goes to the positive side, right over here. Now, sometimes you'll run into the problem where there's already too many things connected to the positive side. Um, that's not uncommon. If that's the case, you can get an adapter like this that allows you to add a second wire. So we'll pull off the wire from the back. Install this and this wire. This is the new one from the distributor onto the adapter. And then we can plug this back into the coil. Like so. All right, now we have the distributor wired up. Uh, the next thing we need to do is figure out our approximate location for the body to get us close. So in order to do that, we will mark the number one position on the distributor cap, which is here. We'll install that back on to the new distributor till it lines up with its keyed mark right here. And then we'll transfer that mark to the body. That is the approximate position of number one. So we can take the cap back off and rotate it till the rotor approximately lines up with that, which is about right there. So now you know you have your number one position pretty close and we can go ahead and tighten down the distributor clamp like so. And we can install the cap. And the last thing we'll do is transfer the plug wires over in order to the new one. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll try starting it up and setting the timing. Thanks for watching.